Okay, day 76, still no Eric Braverman. Um, the Fort Lauderdale shooter, I think, has taken a lot of the news cycle, and uh, it seems like immediately CNN jumped to the fact that the FBI doesn't have enough police powers to hold people past three days, and they need to go to a judge to hold them beyond three days. And again, I just asked the question, um, why didn't they uh, just stop the guy when he got off the plane? If there's enough commotion that you know you can have eight or nine people filming it on, on the plane, why wouldn't, would they let him go get his bag, wait 20 minutes, get his bag, and then go build a gun in the, in the bathroom? I just don't understand why the airport police couldn't have handled that. Um, but, it, but the emphasis with CNN focusing on that, focusing on more police power, rather than just executing an ex investigation of this, um, here we have an independent uh, organization, uh, the Clinton Foundation, you know, con contracting with Delta Force, a set of mercenaries, and training the Muslim Brotherhood with Stingers and Sarin Gas. So, and we have a modus operandi of the last 20 years of them working with groups that cause civil disobedience in a country um, and organize uh, armed uh, overthrows of governments. So this group, now Muslim Brotherhood, is working with La Raza just south of our border, Sinaloa cartel, La Raza, being the political arm. And I'm supposed to worry about an FBI agent in Alaska. Um, now, getting to the subject of hacks, um, again, we're told that this 50-page report, there's something in it about the Russians hacking. But I've proven throughout this series, if you go back to uh, this day 60, that there have been many, many, many hacks of our U.S. classified intelligence given to foreign powers. So, and the use of those, use of extortion of, of political officials and military officials to funnel money through this Haiti funnel, as well as micro loan sharking and so forth. So I think the big question is, was Eric Braverman involved? He went to the press. He seemed like he was doing the right thing. Isn't it time to subpoena him and have him talk about the Clinton Foundation right next to Comey? If they want to talk about the Russian hack, let's talk about all the other hacks that uh, the Clinton Foundation did uh, at the same time. It just seems to be more efficient. Um, as I said before, at this school, the University of Denver, has a, a pretty storied history of kind of producing like State Department folks that, that also could be, uh, you know, sp uh, spies, you know, work for the CIA in a covert manner. So you can, um, you know, we have a, a history of that with Paula Broadwell and creating, uh, General Petraeus kind of creating this Joint Terrorism Task Force, okay? So this is all about the military trying to, trying to reduce. Uh, you know, trying to increase police powers for the FBI again. Uh, so there just seems to be this constant uh, push to get away from the Constitution and go more toward a military type of, of secret police. And I've shown that uh, through this shift away from uh, policing and, and follow-up, you know, lead follow-up to more of this entrapment. And this is not just entrapment with, you know, drug uh, entrapment or, or gun by entrapment. We're talking about using little kids. We're talking about human trafficking, using little kids as bait to extort and, and, and uh, get convictions. Um, and that, if, that may be, you know, uh, morally questionable, and there may be a discussion there. But when you have investigators like Monica Peterson going to Haiti, to investigate who's getting the supply of those of that bait, and then they're murdered. And then there's another gal here uh, at this same school who dies under suspicious circumstances. If you know, I just think it, it bears more uh, investigation than worrying about you know being able to hold people past three days in Alaska. Um, if I didn't create this memo to create a CIA uh, infiltration into the FBI. Uh, that's called JTTF. I didn't. I didn't do that. The president of the United States, through Hillary, uh, together did created this program. Here are all the FBI whistleblowers that have talked about how they're not using warrants anymore. Here's Snowden talking about looking at the president's email without a warrant, and he's a contractor for Booz Allen at the time. So again, this more police power, um, and we're just supposed to trust. 
Well, I might trust the FBI a little bit more if they weren't sitting on these 650,000 emails and, and saying they need five years to process it. I'd trust them more if they didn't take these bribes uh, through their wife and they didn't do these quid pro quos so that they can have more CIA influence into the FBI. So I'm not saying that the FBI isn't a great organization. It is. I'm just saying that this counterterrorism division, this, this, this CIA kind of infiltration is, is what I'm objecting to because you end up with this kind of thing. Uh, the people of Haiti for the last, uh, ever since the earthquake, but for the last two years especially, have been protesting in front of the building. They're not s protesting in secret in front of the Clinton Foundation building saying they only got two, uh, you can argue, between two and five percent of the money given to Haiti. So, you know, here we are in the Miami office. It's not very far from Haiti. Um, why not investigate that? So, um, again, I didn't. I didn't say that half of the emails were classified. The FBI's own search warrant said half of the emails are classified. And, you know, and they went to two people without classified clearance. Now, to me, that's obvious proof, not a Russian hack, you know, a guy living in a, a tin sh shack in Romania, uh, you know, did a password fish on Podesta. This is classified information. So, uh, case closed. And again, it, uh, when we go to the hearings on Tuesday, Comey's going to go to the hearings. He decided not to uh, give uh, Trump the 50-page uh, report, but he decided to give it to uh, NBC instead to make a good week of talk, in, talk shows. He's going to go in front of the House Intelligence Committee, or Senate Intelligence Committee, on Tuesday. Maybe it's a good time to talk about this hack. This is Joe Clancy at, at the uh, Secret Service uh, having, as soon as Ch Chaffet starts questioning him, which is his job, he gets attacked, a cyber attack of 50 agents into his record. So maybe that's a good time on Tuesday to talk about that attack and that hack. These are documented, okay? Maybe it's time to talk about using children, the 40 kids here out on Little St. James Island, uh, for these brownstone operations and extortion of these NATO generals and EU politicians, as well as U.S. generals and U.S. politicians, okay? So again, dead bodies are showing up everywhere with Chandelon being murdered here. Why not follow uh, those crimes rather than, again, worried about uh, having more police power? Um, again, there's a, a, a kind of an orgy of evidence here. Comey did this investigation of HSBC. He knows uh, all the bank routing numbers and transfer numbers of all these dictators, where the money was going from. He knows all the uh, bank transfers to all the people involved in the, in the kind of the Ocean's Eleven crime gang and then their payoffs uh, back to the Clinton Foundation. So these are extortion targets. Mo a lot of them are extortion targets. So th why not expose this and, and publish these names? Um, and, and if we're going to be leaking things, let's, why don't we leak the names of people being extorted? You know, we've got senators meeting with Gaddafi. We've got senators meeting with ISIS. Uh, I think... You know, Tuesday when you're in front of the Senate committee, why don't we talk about that as well? So that's it for this morning, and uh, I'll have a, a more in-depth, researched, um, this more opinion piece today, but I'll have a more researched version later in the day.